anybody that wants to volunteer can come to those orientations. And what we do is they fill out a volunteer application. They have several documents to read. We have a code of conduct. They have to read and sign that. We have a confidential information agreement because many of our volunteers come into contact with a lot of people from the public. Uh, so they have to sign that. We have a vehicle policy because many of our volunteers drive our vehicles. And then they sign an information release, which means that if we put their picture in one of our newsletters, that would be okay with them. So there's a lot of paperwork that they have to read and fill out. And then we also show, at, at the orientation, we will show a DVD on the history of the American Red Cross. And then um, we talk about the five lines of service. And we have the five lines of service, and you're learning about this as you um, do some of the boards. We talked about this early on, um, you know, when you first came in. But we have health and safety, biomedical, disaster, international, and service to the armed forces. So those are the five lines of service. And our volunteers can decide where they want to help, which area. Uh, some of the uh, lines of service require training. Some of them are quicker to start volunteering, like if you volunteer in the blood center, we can train you in about 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, many of our volunteers will start volunteering in the blood center and then they may take classes to become a disaster volunteer or a health and safety volunteer. Many people volunteer in the office, working on the computer, uh, on the phone. And then we also have a lot of volunteers involved in fundraising because all of the money that we use in this chapter, uh, we raise here. So it's, it's all local money, and it's a donated uh, money. So we have to fundraise, and we, uh, we go to corporations and ask them to support us. We go to individuals. We have special events. We, have, we encourage uh, youth volunteers to get involved in fundraising, too. And um, youth have uh, put on a talent show at their schools with all the money going to the Red Cross. They've done band concerts. They've done simple things like lemonade stands, uh, asked people to donate, uh, you know, a dollar, had a, a campaign, uh, just, you know, donate a dollar to your local American Red Cross. So all that together makes up our budget and how we provide the services that we do, and those services are providing blood to our area hospitals. All blood that's in our area hospitals is collected through the American Red Cross. We provide disaster assistance. Anyone that's burned out of their home, that's one disaster, but anybody who's forced out of their home due to a disaster, that could be a tornado, that could be a fire, that could be flooding, um, then we will provide assistance of food, clothing, and shelter. We'll give them that assistance. And then we also um, do communication between servicemen and their families. So uh, that's a service that we have to pay for. Uh, that's emergency communication. If they are deployed and say they're in Afghanistan, then if, if their uh, family is here and there's a birth in the family, then we would have to get that message to that man in the service. So that's the communication. If there were a death in the family, we'd have to get that message to the person in the service. And so that's the type of communication that we do. And then we also raise money for a lot of international causes. Uh, if you have a chance to go to our website, redcross.org, just put that in. Uh, you can Google it or you can put in www.redcross.org and you can see a lot of international causes we're involved in. You will see all these preparedness tear sheets on there. You can find out where a blood drive is in your community just by putting in your zip code. You register for all your health and safety classes there. So it's a great website to go visit and, and get some good information. Okay.